I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a new table runner that I designed. It's called North Star. So the way I usually design is with a pen and paper. And I'm going to draw out the runner here. So we've got five patchwork blocks. I like to do an uneven amount in the runner. I really like to do five, three, seven. It just balances it better. We're going to have a little sashing here. Then we're going to have a border all the way around. And of course we'll have a we'll have a binding as well. So the patchwork is going to look like this. It's kind of a crisscrossed star with a floating point. So we're going to have darker points and they're going to alternate in color. So it doesn't really matter how I color it right now. I just need to know what's going where in terms of depth of color. So the middle is going to be usually a bigger print. It's a bigger square. It's a five inch square. And then in the corners, I'm going to want a little bit of a print. And this could be the same as the backgrounds here, or it could be slightly different. So each square is going to look like that. And once I get the squares done, I'll pick the sashing and the borders. So my points here, those are three inches cut. My backgrounds, those are three and a quarter. These backgrounds, those are, I think they're three and a quarter by five or three by five. I'll have to double check. And I know this is a five by five. All right, that's all we need to do. So we'll take this over to the uh, cutting table. We'll pick out some fabrics and make a nice North Star. I've decided to cut this out of the Stonehenge Stars and Stripes fabrics. They are very patriotic, very Americana. So we're going to use this in the center of each block. And we're going to use the blue and the red for the points. They will frame this very nicely. We'll use this for the background of the points and we'll use this in the corners. I will probably also use these two fabrics for some sashing and borders, maybe some binding. We will see. We'll make the star blocks first. So let's cut some blocks. Start with the center. This is the five inch square piece. So since I'm just trying it out right now, I'm not going to be ironing all my fabrics as much as I normally would to prep it. So when we're in the design stage, I just want to make the runner and see if I like the dimensions, see if I like the proportions. So normally I would have these fabrics severely ironed to be put into a kit. So I'm going to need five blocks that are five inches. Now the points, I need quite a few points. I need 20 of this fabric and 20 of this fabric. And So the points on this runner are what I call floating points. You'll see when we make up the blocks, the points, it's, it's a method that I use so that when you're sewing them, if your sewing isn't perfect, your points won't get cut off. That's one of my pet peeves. I don't like it when you've got a star point and it's, it's cut off because your seam allowance was too big. And because we make pre-cut kits, we have a lot of people who, maybe they're beginning sewers, and they're, they might take their seam allowance too big. We want to make it easy for them to get those points to still show. So there's the points. Now the backgrounds, these are three and a quarters by five, and I'm going to need 20 of them again. Now I like my five this way and my three up going to need two rows again. So these are the corner squares. These are three and a quarter inches. Okay, that's all the cutting for the patchwork. We're going to take it over to the sewing machine and see what it looks like. I've got all my pieces cut here. These are the points of the star, the background, 
These are going to be the four corners. So we need to make the points. So the first step is to take one of the backgrounds. So this is going to be put right sides together on the background and then we're going to sew from this point to that point and then we're going to open it up. So you can draw on the back of there if you like but I've got a faster way to do it. Line up your background and your point fabric with your edges even there. Now I've drawn a line on my sewing machine right from the needle straight down. So if I keep the point and the corner, if I keep this tip on that line the whole time, I will get a straight line. Now if I start sewing and veer it like this, I'm going to be going off. But if I start sewing and keep that tip right on the line, the whole way up, I've got a really straight line. So that saves a lot of time and it's very accurate. And I am going to string piece these, so I'm going to do the same thing with all four corners. We're going to snip them apart and we're going to take them over to the iron and I'll show you how to open these up. Ready to iron. So I always want to press it flat before opening up. So just you want to relax that seam because it, when it's on the bias, so it tends to stretch. Now we are just going to open this up and the corners meet. See, see how nice and neat that is? Now we'll give it a little pressing. A little steam. Same with this one. Last one. Now when you make that corner, when you fold it over there, you know that everything is rectangular and square. Now that we've got it rectangular, we are going to snip off the excess from the back here. So if this is the bottom two layers. I'm going to use the scissors. You can take it to your cutting board and use your uh, rotary cutter if you like, but this is actually a little bit quicker. We want to get all this excess fabric off here so we don't have three layers back there. And you'll notice I'm not cutting it really, really neatly. It's just, this is just all the seam allowance that's left there. So it really wouldn't matter if I'd cut it really, really crooked. So now these are all the same size, all nice and rectangular, and we're going to go put the blue half of the uh, star points on. So this point, it's going to go right sides down on this bottom left corner and we're going to sew here. Now again, I can use, I'm going to sew from here to here. I can use the line I've got drawn there, so let's get it lined right up on the edges and we're just going to sew from this point to the bottom point, so you want that point on the line. We're going to do the same thing with all these corners. Now we'll take this over to the ironing board and iron these guys. Again, iron them flat. So that's just exactly how they were stitched. I just like to get it flat to relax that seam. Now we're going to open this up. Those corners will meet. And we'll trim off that excess seam allowance here. Ready to put the block together. So these are the points that are going to go around the center. And then we've got four corners here. So basically we're going to make one row, another row, and another row. So this is... We'll put these on each side of this. Match your corners. And we are going to finger press this. So my seam allowance is going that way. Seam allowance going that way. That's the way it naturally wants to go. Same thing down here. So this two on the sides. 
finger press to the outside there. Now we'll put these two on the center there. So I'm gonna match up the edges, match up the corners, stitch right along here. Now we're not gonna stitch to this intersection. We're only gonna use a quarter inch seam. So this piece is exactly the right size. It's gonna fit right on here. And we're gonna sew with a quarter inch seam. So you see the intersection here? We're not sewing that far over. That'd be about a half inch over. We're gonna just sew a quarter inch, which is right there. And I'll show you why in just a moment. We are going to finger press these seams towards the center. Now you're starting to see here, these, this intersection does not meet. It's an overlapped star. That means you are always going to have a sharp point here. If I had designed this so that the seam was right to there, if your sewing isn't perfect, you end up with something like that, where it's cut off, which doesn't look very good. This way, even if your sewing isn't perfect, you're always gonna have a point. You may have a little more, a little less showing in here, but you're always gonna have a point. Same thing on the tips, which you'll see in a few minutes. So let's do these last two seams. Now these rows, you do have to match your seam allowances. So we've got this seam allowance going that way. On the back, the seam allowance is going down. So that intersection, if I opened it up, it would make one nice long line. So keep that back seam allowance going up, this one going down. Make sure those seams match. Just got this last one to put on this side. Getting the idea now. Let's take it over to the ironing board. Let's get these extra threads off of it. See how we like the blocks. Now again, we want to iron it with these seams still flat because then you can make sure that these are relaxed and square. So I'm kind of kind of pull it here as I iron. I want these seam allowances to be ironed toward the center. The easiest way is to flip this over and just draw this down. You can kind of hold your seam allowances so they will stay facing down. And then iron it a little bit. And then same thing on the other side. So you want it to be facing this way and then pull that down toward you. Iron it just a little bit. Now, I usually turn it sideways and I look and see if I've got it all squared up. My seams are facing the right way. And then I'm gonna give it just a really good steam press as I pull open. Beautiful, so you'll notice this here, it's overlapped a little on purpose. So you've got a nice point there every time. And these points here, same thing, look how far away they are from the edge. So when we put our borders and sashing on, we're gonna get a nice crisp point every time. I've got five blocks done now, so let's lay them out and see if we like what I've got for sashing and borders here. So I think I'm gonna do a red sashing in the middle. So always when it's a new pattern, I always audition stuff like this because sometimes I think I'm going to use a certain color, but once I lay it out, it just dies. So you've really got to try this out, see what you think. And I actually think this is looking pretty good. And then we'll put this blue on the ends. And then we've got the long borders. Oh, that frames it very nicely. Yeah, I really like that. All right, let's stitch them together and see how it turns out.
finished runner, I'm really happy with how it turned out. We will definitely have this pattern. You'll be able to purchase it as a download or as a hard copy that we can mail to you. And I'm definitely going to get my husband to cut these into kits. We'll have those available right away on our website. Now I want you to notice the stars here. The stars are what we call floating. So the points don't come all the way to the borders. That way the star is really highlighted and you get a nice crisp point every single time. The backing, it's another, it's another one of the Stonehenge fabrics. I like these with the writing to use on backs because uh, if you cut it into small patchwork pieces it doesn't show very much. This pattern, which we are going to call North Star, will come in other colors. Here's another one I made in batiks. So you can see how perfect this pattern is when you've got a nice strong focal fabric. Here I've got a leafy batik and I quilted it with leaves. A lot of times with your focal fabric or a focus fabric you don't want to cut it in real little pieces. You really want it to shine. That's what we've done here. Thanks for watching our video. Be sure to subscribe and give us the thumbs up if you like it.